the next few weeks, I'm going to be doing a short series in this glorious chapter, Romans chapter 8. And this first section I called, based on verse 1, No Condemnation. If you are new to my channel, I encourage you to subscribe and like this video and share it with others who you think might find this helpful. And as always, I really do encourage you to read this passage a few times yourself, just to familiarize yourself with what is in this text. Spend some time praying, ask God to help you to understand his word um, and to use his word to transform you to be more like Jesus. I'm going to highlight just a few of the things that I've seen, but just importantly, Romans 8 is right in the middle of this glorious letter, which some many call the, the greatest of the books in the Bible uh, that God inspired Paul to write. And one of the key things that we see specifically in Romans 8 is this idea of assurance. In a book that is all about the gospel, it's all focused on what Jesus has done for us. Romans 8 highlights this idea of assurance for us because as Christians we want to know for sure that even though as the first seven chapters have shown us all humanity are sinful, we've all fallen short of the glory of God. As chapter 7 ends and Paul says, O wretched man that I am, who can rescue me from this body of death? Then he says, and thanks be to God for Jesus Christ. And he focuses in here on Jesus Christ and what he has achieved for us in his death. So just firstly to highlight where we see our Lord Jesus Christ in focus in this section. He is the Son who is sent by God. So we see the Lord Jesus Christ in focus. And we also see God the Father. God the Father is the one who sent the Son. And then importantly in chapter 8 we see Paul starts to focus in on the work of the Spirit. And up until this point in our Romans, the Spirit has only been mentioned twice, where just in these few verses, the Spirit is mentioned uh, 11 times. Interestingly, here we see the Spirit spoken of as the Spirit of God and the Spirit of Christ. Uh, Paul alternates between uh, these two, showing that uh, Christ and God are have the same status and the Spirit is the Spirit who um, is sent by the Father and the Son uh, to us. Now a couple of other key things uh, that we see in this section. Paul contrasts between life by the Spirit and life lived according to the flesh or the sinful flesh. Some other key repetition in this middle section, we see minds set on the flesh or minds set on what the spirit desires. So Paul is speaking of two different mindsets uh, in this middle section and he speaks of the law, which the law of sin and death and sinful flesh. So he speaks of um, sin and the law of sin and death. Now just as we're on this, what is the law of sin and death? Well, it is the, the old realm in which we used to live. It's everything that Paul has spoken of in the previous seven chapters, how we are all stand condemned because of our sin, our rebellion against God. And so the law of sin and death is, this, is how Paul is referring to this old realm. Um, but we've been set free glorious news here. We've been set free from that realm and we've been brought into the realm in which we now have life. It's the Spirit who gives us life and Paul speaks of uh, life and peace who give life to our mortal bodies. So we've got the law of sin and death and the law of the Spirit who gives life. So we aren't under this realm anymore. We are in the realm of the Spirit. Life is now ours. And that means there is for us no condemnation. Because He condemned, that is Jesus, 
Jesus condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirements of the law might be fully met in us. So Jesus has done the human, or God has done the humanly impossible for us. He's set us free from this old realm in which we used to live. And now by his spirit who dwells in us, he is enabling us to do what we couldn't do on our own to live for him, to do the righteous requirements of the law, which are now fully met in us. So we see here also that the righteous requirements and then right at the end here, the spirit gives life because of righteousness. So as I said, this realm of sin and death, uh, Paul speaks about these two realms, the realm of the flesh, which is that sin and death realm, and the realm of the spirit which is in which we are given life so this is the old realm in which all of us used to live and we couldn't do anything about that we couldn't save ourselves out of that realm because it is the realm of sin and death and as paul says in ephesians 2 all of us were dead in our sins a miracle needed to take place in order to give us life and that is what Jesus came to do he came to set us free there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus because through Jesus we've been set free the law of the spirit who gives life has set us free so God's work through Jesus and by his spirit in us has set us free because we're told here that the law was powerless now, that doesn't mean that the law itself was bad. Uh, the law showed us how to live God's way, but it was powerless in that it couldn't make us righteous. Only Jesus could make us righteous. Because in and of ourselves, the mind that is governed by the flesh, the, that is the mind under the law of sin and death, it does not submit to God's law. And here it cannot please God. So those who live under the law of sin and death, their minds are governed by the flesh. They are hostile to God. You just see these are, are big statements. Hostile to God. Uh, it's governed by the flesh. Does not submit to God. Cannot please God. So cannot please God means that by our flesh we can't have this life. We can only have this life because Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. It says God sent his son in the likeness of human flesh. He came fully man, but not sinful man, to be a sin offering. He then condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirements of the law might be fully met in us. These are glorious truths. God has done the humanly impossible for us. He set us free and now he dwells in us by his spirit. You just look at this repetition of these words, in us. God lives in you. But if Christ is in you, the Spirit who lives in you. We have God in us. That is a mind-boggling reality. God has done the humanly impossible in setting us free. He now dwells in us by His Spirit. And so He is the one who now enables us to live, not governed by the flesh, but we are now governed by the Spirit who is life and peace. We can actually live God's way now. And how can we know for sure that we will be able to live this way? Well, verse 11, And if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead, the same powerful Spirit who, who brought Jesus back from death, He's now in us. He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his spirit who lives in you. Another mind-boggling thought, the, the powerful spirit of God, that is incredible power, is now in us. And just as he raised Jesus from the dead, 
So we who were dead under this realm, dead in our sins, our transgressions, we've been made alive with Christ by the Spirit who now lives in us. So there is now no condemnation for us if we're in Christ Jesus. What incredible assurance Paul is giving us to those who have loved and followed Jesus. These few verses are giving us a massive picture of the difference that Jesus has made, that the Spirit makes in us. We are now in the realm of life and peace. We are no longer in the realm of sin and death. And this is a life that begins now. By God's Spirit, He is transforming us more and more into the likeness of our Lord Jesus. And it's a life that will continue forever. He will give life to your mortal bodies. Because our fleshly bodies are still marred by sin, we will one day face death. But death won't be the end for us. Our mortal bodies will be raised, just like Christ was raised from the dead. We'll have life with Him forever. So we have this assurance in this life, but we also have this assurance for the life to come. And so we can rejoice and rest in the fact that God has done the humanly impossible for us in Christ. He set us free from the law of sin and death. And now by His Spirit, He is dwelling in us and He is enabling us to live not according to the old realm we were in. We no longer, we, we are now actually able to submit to God's law. See, God's gifts of His Son and His Spirit mean that obedience isn't only possible now, it's actually assumed and it's expected. And as we dig into these truths, they should thrill our hearts as those who now don't stand condemned anymore. And so I pray that as you dig in further, that you'll delight in this truth and that you will, uh, as you teach it to others, that you will call them to delight in this truth too. Well, God bless as you dig in further.